Hello and welcome to Study History with Mr P and in my video today I'm going to look at um, Elizabeth's relations with Spain. Now in terms of foreign policy, Elizabeth's foreign policy aims were to develop and improve trade to benefit the English economy, to protect England's borders and the English throne and to avoid war. But ultimately this policy also led to commercial, political and religious rivalry. So first of all, commercial rivalry. English merchant ships began to explore new markets and trading partners, but they faced problems in developing trade because Spain controlled the Netherlands and England's main route to European markets through Antwerp and much of the New World where there were valuable new trading opportunities. Spain claimed much of the Americas of its own where there were valuable crops like tobacco and sugarcane and huge supplies of silver. However, a license to trade was needed from Spain. The English merchants ignored Spain's rules, traded illegally without licenses, and even attacked Spanish ports and shipping. So into the mix now comes Francis Drake, who was an English merchant. He made his name and fortune by trading in the New World, making huge sums of money for people, including Elizabeth I, who invested in his voyages. Much of what Drake did could be seen as pri piracy. But Elizabeth I hired Drake as a privateer in 1572. But this was risky because it could have provoked further conflict with Spain. And it was only avoided because when he returned in um, 1570s, Elizabeth and Philip II of Spain were trying to improve the Anglo-Spanish relations. So in 1577, Drake set off for the New World again. The official plan was to sail round the tip of the South America to its Pacific coastline and to bring gold, silver, spices and other valuables back to England. But she also issued Drake with secret orders um, to attack Spain's colonies in the New World so as to disrupt Spain's trade and send a message of defiance to Philip II. Drake's voyage from 1577 to 1580 became famous because his route home led him to circumnavigate the globe. In the Pacific, Drake plundered Spanish ports and ships along the coastline of Chile and Peru and claimed a region of North California in Elizabeth's name, known as New Albion. He returned home with £400,000 of Spanish treasure and was knighted by Elizabeth I. Drake's actions showed that England did not accept Spain's domination of the Americas. It made Drake a national hero and showed Elizabeth England's strength as a seafaring nation. It did, of course, also boost crown finances. There was then also political and religious rivalry. So the nations of Europe were rivals and this often led to war and religion was a source of conflict. In the 1500s, England was not as wealthy or powerful as either Spain or France. They competed to be the greatest European power and valued England as an ally. France wanted England as an ally because it was surrounded by Spanish territory except to the north. Spain wanted to be allied to England because Elizabeth fleet could help protect its ships sailing in the channel to the Netherlands. However, from 1567, Elizabeth's privy councillors pressured her to help the Dutch Protestant rebels. Spanish ships were sailing with troops and resources for the Duke of Alba's army, which was trying to brutally stamp out Protestantism in the Netherlands. Elizabeth was reluctant to help the rebels because she wanted to avoid war, was worried about the Pope's backing would lead France to support Spain and encourage English Catholics to welcome the Spanish invasion that Philip might support and that Philip then might support Catholic rebels in England. So instead, Elizabeth applied pressure on the Spanish to return the Netherlands to how it had been governed until 1566. She did this by indirectly helping Dutch rebels, allowing Spanish shipping and colonies to come under attack from English privateers, pursuing friendly relations with France and encouraging others to fight the Spanish in the Netherlands. She even promised a marriage alliance to the heir to the French throne, the Duke of Alcanon, and when this did not work, urged him to fight the Spanish in the Netherlands. And this leads us on to an event known as the Spanish Fury and the Pacification of Ghent, which occurred in 1576. So Spanish forces in the Netherlands mutinied after not being paid. In the Spanish Fury, they rampaged through the Dutch provinces and sacked Antwerp. It united all 17 Dutch Protestants, both Catholic and Protestant, against Spain. They drew up the pacification of Ghent, which demanded that all Spanish troops be expelled from the Netherlands, 
political autonomy and an end to religious persecution. Elizabeth owned the Dutch rebels £100,000 and agreed to send an expeditionary force in the future to help. Philip II's brother, Don Juan, arrived in the Netherlands and agreed to the terms. But then, less than six months later, Philip II sent a new army to attack Dutch. Elizabeth I then hired and financed a mercenary, John Casimir, to raise an army of 6,000 volunteers to help the Dutch. But his forces is then devastated Dutch Catholic churches, and Dutch Catholics then made peace with Spain. Elizabeth was then urged to intervene directly, but she hesitated. The Dutch asked the French for help, and the Duke of Alsenor arrived with an army, but the Dutch had the upper hand led by the Duke of Parma. So lastly then, we see the restoration of Spanish fortune. So in 1580, Philip II had gained Portugal, its empire and naval forces, making Spain even stronger. Elizabeth I therefore did not, or still did not intervene in the Netherlands, and Elizabeth turned to France again. The Duke of Alsenon came to England in October 1581, and Elizabeth gave him £70,000 for support in the Netherlands. In 1582, he returned to the Netherlands, but failed again. He then died on the 10th of June 1584, meaning he could no longer fight the Spanish obviously in the Netherlands. Then on the 10th of July, William of Orange was assassinated, which left the Dutch rebels without a leader. In 1584, the French Catholic League then signed the Treaty of Joinville with Philip II to secure his help against French Protestants. In 1585, the King of France signed up to the League's aim of ridding France of heresy, which made France and Spain allies against Protestantism, and posed a big problem for Elizabeth I. So that concludes my look at Elizabeth's relations with Spain and the impact that this has.